Hello and welcome to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information to help you understand and manage the technology in your home. Today's guest is Whitney. I was scouring Instagram for some awesome DIY content and I stumbled across your content. Amazing stuff. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've got going on. Okay. Um, first of all, thank you. That was very nice. There are a lot of DIYers on Instagram. So <laughs> the fact that you could even find me makes me feel great. Um, I am very self-taught as I think most DIYers are. Um, my passion for it really started when we bought our current home. So it had been a rental for 13 years and it was completely trashed. There were like bunnies living in the basement and just all, it, it smelled terrible. Everything needed to be replaced. But because of that, it was within our budget to get a home that had four bedrooms and a backyard instead of a townhouse. And so we decided we can do this, you know? And so kind of was thrown into it for financial reasons initially. Um, I did grow up watching my parents kind of DIY everything. And so their example definitely led to that, but that was kind of how I got started on it. It was just needing to make my home not disgusting. <laughs> well, I remember watching this old house, like with my parents, I, like we didn't DIY much, but like, I remember my, my dad was obsessed with Bob Vila. So yep, my um, dad loved that one too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's the original DIY guy, right? Like, Absolutely. Yes. And showing you how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So let's dig right into, you know, how to get all this because uh, like, I am not a DIY person. I can't, you know, I can do tech. I can't do like stuff. So let's talk about research first, because I'm sure, you know, you're looking at your, you know, I'm not going to disparage your house, but your disgusting house from your no, real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at your disgusting house and you're like, okay, where do I start? What projects do I want to get going? Like what, yeah. what helps you with that? Um, the biggest thing is usually Google. <laughs> um, when I kind of see something that I'm like, okay, I, I need to make that work better for us or our floors need to be replaced. I immediately start doing research and just like anything online, and you have to be really careful what sources you go to. So what I always suggest is go to multiple sources. Don't just like get on one YouTube and like one YouTube video and learn how to do something and go do it. Watch multiple. And I also try to find reputable sources. Um, a lot of bigger companies will put out, you know, how to videos or um, people who are licensed professionals. I try and like focus on theirs. Um, but again, they're not always right either. So finding multiple <laughs> multiple sources to make sure I'm not just looking to one. Um, lots of blog posts as well. Um, blogs can sometimes be easier than a video if you want it like broken down into like how to steps rather than just watching someone do it. Sometimes that can be easier as well. So I do a little bit of both of those. Oh, that's good. And you brought something up that I've actually used myself. A lot of the manufacturers will have their own little like yes. tutorials on like how to install whatever it is they've got going on. So yeah, that's yeah. a really good resource that I really didn't think about that I, I go to, but mm -hmm. I definitely like, like if I'm looking at a bunch of search results and I see one from the manufacturer, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm going to go check that one out. Yes, might absolutely. Not. I'm Those working on a shower be. right now and I, I needed saw that. to know how to do my shower pan and Turns out the shower pan liner and drain company has a bunch of videos. And so I watched all of those in addition to some other ones to figure out what to do. Yeah, I've been confidence. watching. So. I've been watching your shower transformation. I'm like, that stresses me out. It looks so, me too. so com <laughs> <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you pow powering through. Um, so what, like aside from, you know, the actual like, OK, I'm looking at this to like get this done. What are your favorite places for like inspiration? Like, cause I wouldn't even know where to start. Like, yeah. okay, I, my floor is disgusting, but I don't even know what I want. Right. Um, honestly, when I started my Instagram page, I didn't even know that 
like DIY Instagram accounts were a thing. I was just like, I'm gonna do this. This is kind of fun. And then very quickly realized that is a big world of like <laughs> DIY Instagrammers. And so following a lot of them is awesome because you get to kind of learn what you like and don't like. And you'll see people who have a million followers do something and think, ah, do that you know that's not my favorite and then you'll see someone else do something you're like okay I really like that but maybe in this color and so a lot of um inspiration can come from there um sometimes if I know I want to do a certain project I'll just kind of again google like you know right. flooring options and kind of see what comes up and a lot of people create mood boards and things. I know Canva is big for doing mood boards. I'm kind of lazy and I usually just end up screenshotting a bunch of things. And then when the time comes, I like go to my screenshot album and go back. I'm like, okay, what did I like? You know, yes. where was that one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's, you know, that's a good point. Cause, um, I screenshotted my friend was just like, a screenshot of her like in her backyard, but I was like, Ooh, I really like your backyard. And yeah. so I screenshotted her backyard and yeah. I'm going to do something like that. But yeah, like getting ideas from like just even your friends on Facebook mm -hmm. and things like that. Yes. Um, Absolutely. And I found that the screenshotting helps me because my memory is not very good. And if I go, Oh, where did I see that? I yeah. cannot remember where to go back and find it. So I have learned like if I see something I like, I just have to screenshot it right away and then I know it's saved for later. <laughs> right, right. Same. Like if I rely on my memory for anything, it's just not going to go well. Yeah. Um, so like I know in the beginning, so I maybe this has dropped off a lot because you haven't mentioned it, but um, is Pinterest not really a thing anymore or what's um, kind of going on there? It totally is. Honestly, for me, it becomes a time thing. If I'm on too many different <laughs> platforms and things, <laughs> I spend too much time. And so because I do follow, you know, a hundred different DIY accounts, I feel like I can get quite a lot from there. But Pinterest is definitely yeah. still very high on people's like inspiration boards. Like that is definitely still an awesome resource. And yeah. an easy way to pin stuff, you know, on Instagram, you can save the different posts, um, Instagram right. or, and Pinterest, you can pin them. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, but I like what you said about Google, because um, a lot of people, I mean, will just look at the regular Google search results. But if you tap on images, you can probably get a little more like kind of like a Pinteresty view of like all these different Absolutely. images. And you're like, oh, I like that one. And then it can take you directly to yes. the blog post or whatever. Totally. And yes, images is way better than just doing a search. <laughs> yeah, totally. If you're looking for that, because it will give you the big picture and give you lots of options right there. That yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you keep track of all the projects then? So I let's say my house is disgusting. I want to do this and this and this and this and this. <laughs> like, how am I going to keep track of everything I want to do and prioritize? Um, so I keep a running list in my notes app on my phone. <laughs> nice. No, that's great. Yeah. Every time I think of one, I'm like, oh, let me add it to the list. So I don't forget. And then I can prioritize. And when I'm ready to start something new, I go to that list. I'm like, okay, what do I either want to do or need to do next? You know, and kind of balance right. that out. But I just always have a running list. People are constantly, like the biggest question I get, like hands down is, well, what are you going to do when you run out of projects? I'm like, right. I won't. I don't know what that would look like. <laughs> there, because every time I take one thing off my list, I add two more. So right, <laughs> never ending. When you have a, I, I'm just gonna keep saying it, like disgusting house. Yeah, like yes. everything. I can do everything here. <laughs> well, and now I'm finally getting to the point where, like, once I finish this shower, pretty much everything except the carpet on my second floor has been, every surface has been changed. <laughs> every right. light fixture, every wall has been painted, every flooring has changed, everything, um, all the cabinetry. And so now I'm to the point where I've got, in a lot of ways, like some blank slates and things that I can then add more character to or more function. I've recently found I have a passion for making things function better. <laughs> I love that. I'm like a huge organ, like productivity organization, like yes. not guru, but like, I don't know what, aficionado. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. I love that kind of stuff. Um, so if you're deciding on a project, we're going to like YouTube, we're looking at different um, ways to do it. 
do you save those videos so like you know so you can find them again later like do you watch them as you're doing them like how do you utilize that i should save them because i can't tell you how many times i've tried to find one i watched and can't find it again so that's a really good idea um <laughs> for me i am kind of a night owl so i work as a nurse and i work graveyards on the weekends um and so for me my husband, he gets up really early to go to work and I'm kind of just laying there like I'm not tired. And so that is usually when I'm doing my YouTube watching and research, I'll just put my headphones in and kind of plan out, okay, what am I going to do this week? Or what am I going to do tomorrow? Because watching them while I do it isn't as helpful for me. For me, I kind of need to know ahead of time what the whole plan is and then just go do it. And so I'll watch sometimes the same video multiple times. Right. Now, what did they do right there? And try and kind of just internalize it so that I can then go do it the next day or in a few days. So I definitely stay up way too late sometimes <laughs> watching really exciting YouTube videos yeah. about shower drains. So. Right, shower drains. <laughs> like, do you ever get down the like shower drain rabbit hole? That would be like a strange yeah. YouTube rabbit hole to get yeah. down. <laughs> like oh um, oh this one looks interesting too and this one yes and then the problem becomes that okay i put the video away and then i start like building it in my head while i'm trying to go to sleep and then i'm like okay i need melatonin because i'm right. just gonna construct this whole thing in my head instead of sleeping so yeah for sure um okay so we have a plan we've got videos do you do anything to like organize your project and like plan out like because like for a shower I mean, yeah. there's definitely like an mm -hmm. order that you would need to do. Like, how do you, yeah. or do you just have that in your head? No, or definitely. How do you do so again, okay. I, I rely a lot on the notes app, especially since they added the bubble list feature where you can like check off the things as you go. Um, sure. And so I will usually have two different lists for a project I'm doing. One is the different steps I still need to take. Um, and I kind of keep those bigger picture, like install the shower pan or, you know, like the liner and do different things rather than like every little step and then you staple this and then you, you right, know, right but just the bigger steps and i can kind yeah. of then as i can see it written out i can kind of break it up by day or week and be like okay so this week i'm going to try and get these three items done and then i have another list that is all the supplies i'm going to need and i oh, nice. definitely utilize like the home depot and lowe's apps um and i'll get on there and that way i know what i'm getting ahead of time again i screenshot because it'll show you at the store that you shop at what aisle and bay oh, that i yep. is at and how much they have and i'm like okay so i'll screenshot it that way when i'm in the store i can just open my screenshots and be like okay where was that and because again i will forget and it's no fun to have to look it up in the stores so yeah. i kind of try and figure out everything i'm gonna need at the beginning and that list always grows throughout the project as you forget about things but i do try and plan ahead of time my um home depot and lowe's and floor and decor and ikea trips i i don't live super close to anything so oh it's helpful to have it planned ahead of time <laughs> gotta plan out those trips i actually have done the exact same thing with the home depot just like screenshot exactly the aisle and bay that i need to go to but sometimes like there's like an aisle that i do not even know what like i had to ask an employee i'm like what is this aisle like uh, it's not a number it's not like what are you even oh, talking yeah. about <laughs> like yeah, oh yeah that's like the back to... wall and i'm like yes. oh yeah that's so clear like <laughs> because we couldn't just say back wall yeah right <laughs> yeah it's like some weird acronym and you're like i don't know where this aisle is um, or you but yeah, get exactly. really used to your store and then you're like, oh, yeah. I'm going to be in this area. I'll just stop at theirs. And they literally will flip flop the design. Yeah. And so I'm like, that is what's normally on the other side of the store. And right. so it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The app and website, super, super important to help yes. with that. Yes. Um, and then for the Android users out there is I, I'm not an Apple user. I have mm -hmm. an iPhone here that I kind of play with, but um Google Keep is great also like how you're saying you keep using the notes app the notes app Google there, yeah there Google one. Keep awesome. is going to also be like a super helpful you can have like checklists inside your different notes Perfect. and things like that so um yeah. so if you're not an Apple user Google Keep is a great option and even if you are an Apple user I love yeah. Google Keep because I can pull it up that, on yeah. my 
I can pull it up on my computer. Like it just go keep.google.com and it's got all my notes there too. That's so awesome. yeah, it's super helpful. I um, wanted to okay. say really quick too on yeah. the like looking it up ahead of time where they are. I know that for a lot of people, especially women, but men too, who are not as comfortable with DIY and want to take on a project, that can often be the most intimidating part is going to the store because you don't want to look like an idiot that, you know, and yeah. I will say like, there are tons of people willing to help you, but sometimes it can give you peace of mind, like knowing that you already know what you're going to get, like, and where it's going to be. And so right. that is just a tip too, is like, okay, if you're going to go to the hardware store and you don't go very often, try and see if you can figure out where things are ahead of time. So you don't feel as lost and it'll just, and then you can always ask questions because people are always willing to help. Oftentimes too, the people that help me are the ones who are just shopping on the aisle with me and they'll right. be like, oh, well, what are you using that for? And I'll say, you know, and they're like, well, maybe try this instead, you know? And so there's always lots yeah. of helpful people too, but anyway. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I don't go very often to Home Depot, but yeah, I've always found like, even just the customers are just like super helpful. I think everybody just wants to help each other, you know, get their projects done. So that's a really great tip. Um, and then, yeah, getting it all in advance because, yeah, it can be intimidating walking in yeah. there. You're like, I'm not like I'm not qualified to be here. <laughs> yes. Especially like I'm on the lumber aisle and I'm like got yeah. two kids in my arms. I'm like, oh, I don't look like I belong. But I do. Yeah. And we all can. Right. So. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And like, and don't get offended if somebody's like offering to help you. You know, they're just trying yeah. to help. You, know, yes. you can you don't have to be like. Oh, like they don't think I know what I'm doing or right. anything like that. Like, no, they're just trying to be helpful. Like, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Yeah. But, um, so let's talk about actual product pro ugh, projects. <laughs> so what are your like favorite tools, like your go to tools that you end up reaching for, like almost every yeah. project? OK, I have kind of the ones that I'm kind of going to start at like the most basic, like what I would start with. If you don't have any tools, I think most people nice. do have a drill, but if you yeah. don't, that would be the first thing I would get the first power tool. Um, most of my power tools are the same brand. I've found that if you're going to be getting a lot of battery powered, it's nice to stick with a, the same brand because the batteries are interchangeable and yeah. batteries end up going bad. It's nice that I only have to replace one brand of battery and I can switch them between the different tools. Um, yeah. And with the drill, you have um, the drilling bits and the driving bits. And so both are important and you can just get like a basic set when you're starting out and they'll totally do the job. So this is for pre-drilling holes and that's for putting things into them. Um, so that, <laughs> again, most basic tool, most people know what it is and how to use it, but, um, I like that breakdown. If you don't have a short that says like drilling and driving, this puts a hole in and this puts stuff in the hole, you need to make that short right away because <laughs> that like, that's not something like I can understand that concept. And I kind of yeah. knew like those two things, but like, that's a really good concept that I don't think people <laughs> really put those things together. Yes. Keep it basic. Yes. Um, right. Right. So that, and then my next two favorites are kind of a tie, but um, this is a brad nailer. Now there are kind of two different types. So mine doesn't have a power source. It's pneumatic. So I hook it up to an air compressor and the pressure of the air is what drives the brad nails in. Um, more people have battery powered ones. I honestly bought mine because it came with a compressor and I wanted a compressor anyway. And so that was why I bought this one, but a battery powered one sometimes would be nice because I have like a hose that comes off the back of this one and I have to carry my compressor anywhere. But this is kind of like invaluable with any type of like trim work or accent wall. Um, so I said the most common question I get is what do you do when you run out of projects? Probably the second one is where do I start? Like what's a good, first project I can do. And I yeah. always say, start with an accent wall <laughs> because there are nice. so many different options. You can stick to just paint. You can do like a mural or stencils or stripes or, you know, different things, or you can do board and batten. You could do like half wallpaper, half beadboard. Like there are so many different options and you can find one that fits the tools you have and the needs you have. Um, and this would be kind of the first tool I would really venture out past a drill would be a brad nailer. Um, so just 
for an idiot like me, would that no. be considered a nail gun? Is that like, is that what that is? Like a nail gun or so is it, 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 it's a form of a nail gun. There are also like nail guns go, there's all sorts. So there's like a framing nail gun that would shoot like three inch nails. If you're like putting two by fours together to build a wall and that okay. would not be very helpful. Like doing a board and batten wall. This does, Got um, it. I believe this is an 18, yeah, 18 gauge nail. So they're really tiny. You can get them in different lengths and they just sit in this cartridge here. Um, you can also get even smaller than this and get what's called a pin nailer that people use for teeny tiny trim. This is what I have found to be the most versatile that I can kind of use for all sorts of finish work, but it isn't great for like constructing like an actual wall or something like that. Okay. But I have these <laughs> good to know, good like, to know. Trim on furniture. So like it's okay. I don't know. I use this all the time for all sorts of DIY projects. So it's Got one it. of my favorite. But so it's a Brad nailer. Not yes. necessarily like a nail gun. Okay. Right. Good to know. Right. Okay. Um, so my next favorite one is an orbital sander. This is one that you can totally get away with, but I think it was $70 and I have gotten way more than that worth out of it. Nice. <laughs> um, so when I refinished my kitchen cabinets, um, you have to um, sand them down and then you prime them and you sand the primer. And when you're doing an entire kitchen, that is a lot of sanding. And so that was when I finally bought this, having no idea how I would like use it for almost every single project ever. So what this does is it, it just rotates really fast and you can get sandpaper discs in different grits. Um, higher grits are more fine. I always feel like that's really confusing, but 80 grit is like super rough. 220 is really smooth. Um, Got it. And so those discs just go on there and it takes like a three hour sanding job and does it in 20 minutes. So I really like this one. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So that is, those, those two are kind of my favorite. Um, one that is really helpful and popular if you're doing a lot of DIY is a miter saw. So it's also sometimes called a chop saw. This is an old one. My nicer one is bolted to my tool bench in my garage. So sure. <laughs> have this one in my you couldn't room, bring that all the way in there. I mean, come on. Uh, you can cut, you know, straight and then you can adjust and cut at different angles and things with that. It's really helpful for, again, trim. If you're doing, you know, any sort of trim or cutting boards, but if you don't have that and want to do like a board and batten wall, say you're starting out small. Um, I always say like, try and find a project where you only need to buy one new tool. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't start a project where you have to buy five new tools all at once. That just financially, it can be really hard. It can be really intimidating to learn all, to use all of them at once. So if you're going to do something and you need to buy a brad nailer, you can wait and not buy the miter saw. This is called a miter box. And you can just put your piece of wood in it and it has lines that keep your saw straight while you cut. You can also do 45 degree angle ones on this one too. But oh, I just like to throw that out there as an option because I think sometimes people feel like, well, if I don't have like a miter saw, how am I even going to cut my boards? You can also get them cut at the hardware store often. If you need just a few boards cut, they will often cut them for you. They also have a miter box and a saw in the store. So if you don't have one of these and don't want to spend, they're pretty cheap, but you can also mm. cut them ahead of time at the store. Um, oh, cool. So that's that. And then I have two more saws that I use all the time. So I don't have a table saw that tells you how, what like a newbie I am. I don't have a table saw. They're pretty expensive and they take up a lot of space, but I have found that this circular saw substitutes really well. Um, I'm able to put a saw guide down that clamps onto my wood and then I just follow along and can make long rip cuts with this circular saw. So nice. that one I use all the time and it does double duty for me serving as my table saw as well. That's on my someday list. Someday. Um, <laughs> and then this is a multi-tool and this one has different attachments, but this is great for like, if you need to just cut something small in tight quarters, um, like sometimes you need to trim off a piece of baseboard to fit like a panel behind it on an accent oh, okay. wall or sure. you know, something like that. This is really awesome for that. So I use that one quite often as well. And it has, like I said, different types of blades and tips you can put on the end. So those are kind of my main big tools that I use all the time that are, 
I love it. So now what about like super cool special tools that people might not be aware of? Like what yeah. kind of tools do you have for that? Okay. Um, so this one I just recently got, I've been borrowing my parents for years, but this is a laser level. Um, they make all sorts of kinds, but when you turn it on, I'm not going to shine it at the camera, but it's yeah. like self level. Um, and so you can set it on something and then you just let it rest for a minute and it'll give you a perfectly level line and it'll give it all across a wall or it'll do it across two walls. Um, this one's kind of fun because it's magnetic, so I can just stick it anywhere like and it'll anyway. Cool. You can also put it, it has a tripod attachment. So these are a game changer. I've done not in my current house, but in previous houses, I've done like stripe accent walls with horizontal stripes and they make it so fast because you just put it on there. Actually, I do have a stripe wall in my house. I lied. Um, you just put it on there and you just follow it with your tape and it's so much easier having done it by hand as well. It is yeah. so much easier with a laser level. Um, so those are awesome. Yeah, I need, like, oh, I, like a, I, I need to get one of those. I just have like a I need to get one of those because I just have like a regular level and like hanging all of these, I'd have to like put the little like level thing on it and then like try and like place it yeah. without the level falling off. And it's just mm -hmm. crazy. It's hard. It is yeah. a challenge. <laughs> and I mean, I use my manual levels all the time too for other things, but now that I have this, I know those are not going to get used nearly as much because it's easier <laughs> and it's just hands-free, right? I don't have to, once I get it set up, I don't have to touch it. And so that's kind of yeah. awesome as well. That's Along the same good. line with lasers, I don't have one of these, but they actually have tape measures. I, you can't even call it a tape measure, but oh, you just yeah. like, stick it along a wall and you push a button having it aimed at what, like what you want to measure. And I, I believe it uses a laser and it'll tell you like to the six to the 32nd inch, like how long that space is. So that's also on my, I need to get one of those lists, but I thought I'd share that too, because I think yeah. those are amazing. <laughs> yeah. But. So we had, um, we had an addition built on our house. This was a, uh, not, and this is the opposite of DIY. It's pay somebody to do it. Um, and yeah. when they came around, like they had that thing and I was like, Oh, that is cool. Right. Well, and I've seen people use them. I'm like, those can't be that accurate. But then people are like raving about them. And I'm like, man, that looks yeah. a lot nicer than like right. me, like, to like calling one of my kids. Can you come home? Man, and, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> and then like, or, when like, you're trying to retract it, it's like, ah. yes, or you like get it just set and then you move and it comes out and yeah. you have to go all the way. But anyway, I need to get yeah. one of those because I think those are awesome. Um, totally. And then stud finder is also something that if you're going to do many projects, definitely worth investing in. Um, so I have two, this one is just kind of a very cheap, basic one. And you just kind of go along and then it'll beep once you hit a stud and I kind of do it from both directions and just mark it with a pencil. This is a nicer one because as you're going along, it kind of marks it for you. You probably can't see that, but it has these little lights no, here. And so I, I could see the will, lights when it was you going. You could see yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. as I move, it'll kind of stay on the, the lights will stay on the stud. So that makes it a little bit more straightforward than kind of like hunting for it with that one. So I use those again, Very constantly. Nice. Yeah. If you're going to do anything electrical, a voltage tester is great. You just turn it on and you stick it next to, if you'd like shut off a fuse so that you can replace a light fixture you put this up by the wires and it'll beep if there's electricity and it won't if there's not oh, so light fixtures are a really fun way to update a space but they can be really intimidating and so this is just yeah. like obviously you can make sure your light doesn't turn on but for me just having that peace of mind of like testing it is really nice too that was yeah, a scary I am, one for me to venture into. So I am terrified of electrical stuff. Like I yeah. will shut down the power to the entire house before I'll even like touch something electrical. Yeah. So that's actually a really good because like yeah. when you pulled it up, I was like, do you put that in the socket? Like you I can. don't get that. You oh can my gosh, well. that scares so, me so much. Well, I don't like stick it in. I just kind of stick it next to it. That's the thing is you don't have to touch okay. with it. It'll kind of start okay. to beep as you get close to electricity. And so okay. you'll kind of know like, oh, it's starting to beep. It's still on. And then if it's off, I will like fully touch it and nothing happens. Okay. I'm like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> so yeah, I use so that scary. one anytime I'm doing electrical. Electrical is one that it should be scary because it can be really dangerous, but then if you learn how to do it, then it kind of takes that fear out of it and it becomes pretty awesome. So 
Yeah. I used to be totally terrified of it too. And then I wired my basement and had to learn so much and had to learn all the code requirements and realize, oh, wow, there are so many measures in place to keep us safe. This is awesome. <laughs> so, That's so cool. Anyway. Um, and we got a comment. And if you have any questions at all, for sure, uh, feel free to pop that in the chat and we can address those. Um, but this comment, these are great for Father's Day. I didn't even really think about that, but I'm like, oh yeah, this would be a really good video to watch for anybody who is looking for tools to get the fathers in their lives for Father's Day. So yeah. thank you, Amy, for that tip. You are absolutely right. Great for Father's That's Day. That's awesome. And I yeah. just had one more kind of fun tool. This one is a little bit like fancier and more, but this is a router. This is something I asked for for Christmas. <laughs> um, this one um, has different bits you can put on. So right now I have just a rounded one and it's made for going along the edges of things and it'll kind of give it like a, I have decorative ones and things. So this has kind of been a fun like next step, like. I can not just build something, I can make it look fancier and you can get really fancy and they have tables that hold them so you can just move your wood around it, but I'm not that fancy. Yeah. So that's kind of a fun one as well if you're into more like furniture or built-in type stuff, so. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, a router to me is completely different. So <laughs> router means like Wi-Fi for me, but. Oh, yes, that too. <laughs> So when you look around, I'm like, hmm, that's weird. I don't know like, that. I don't know that router. kind of router. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Different kind of router. Um, awesome. Any others that we've missed? Nope. Those are the ones that yep. I had out. <laughs> awesome. I love all of that. That's so cool. Um, so as you're doing your projects, you hit a snag. How do you like change, pivot? Like, have you, do you have any stories about something like that where you're like, okay, I got to like, change up. Oh, absolutely. It happens all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I try to always share those things because any project you do, any type of DIY, you're going to come across. Like it's never going to go exactly as you think it will. That would like be the opposite of DIY. Um, <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> me, the first thing I usually do is lose a lot of sleep. No, <laughs> Because I, like I said, I kind of like lay awake at night trying to problem solve. But um, the nice thing with coming across problems is there's usually a lot of other people who have come across the same problem oh, and smart. have wisdom to share. And so yeah. I go online. I also often will FaceTime my parents. My dad knows all about plumbing. So he's gotten a few FaceTime calls with <laughs> this project with the shower. Like sometimes you just need to talk to someone who even if they're not like professional, like has some idea what you're doing and you can be like, this is what I'm thinking. What are your thoughts? Like, does this sound, am I crazy? You know? Right. And so if you have a friend or a neighbor or a family member, someone that, like I said, even if they've never done the project, but they're kind of handy, just someone to like bounce ideas off of. FaceTime is just so awesome because, or, you know, Skype, any of that, that you can like see and show people while you're talking that's always really helpful. Um, I trying to think of like specific, specific stories. So I recently redid my stair treads and I had thought when I started the project, okay, I'm just going to like take the carpet off and I'll like sand them down and it'll be great. And I'll just like paint them or, and I got to them, like I took the carpet off and they were just destroyed. Like again, rental for 13 years. Five right. of my like 13 stair treads were broken, like big chunks missing. <laughs> and they were made of a material that can't really be sanded. And so I remember just like laying on the floor and accept accepting that, okay, I have gotten myself into this. I now have to figure out how to get 13 stair treads off and I have to buy new ones and I have to show people that I'm doing it, <laughs> you know? And sometimes you just kind of have to take that minute to like, accept the disappointment and be like, okay, this is not how I saw this going. Let's take a breather and we'll get back at it. You know, kind of nice. maybe take the day off. I'm not always good at that. Sometimes I come across a problem and I'm like, I need to fix it now. But I right. wish that I was better at just like stepping back and being like, okay, I'll address this with fresh eyes tomorrow. Once I've processed yeah. that I have to do this differently than I thought. <laughs> yeah, sometimes just taking a step back and breathing, giving yourself time to like think about 
how to resolve it. That's, yes. that's a good tip. Um, I didn't write this down for your question, so I apologize for throwing this curveball. No. But have you used any of the like AR or like AI kind of things to help you plan anything? Like, it, for example, like if I'm buying something on Amazon, like uh, furniture on Amazon, I can like see what it would look like in my space. Like, have you tried any of that out? Honestly, I am not like you talk about not being DIY savvy. I'm not very tech savvy. So yeah. I have not. I have siblings who are very into that tech world, though. So I should have them show me that because that would be awesome. Um, as a kid, I my parents had this program on our computer where you'd like put the CD in and you could like design houses, but it was just like floor planning. Um, sure. And that was like my hobby from like 10 on. That was like what I did. And so I'm sure, and then you could like, like click a button and it would show you the view from inside the house you created. And it was like super distorted and not, you know, <laughs> like this is the nineties, right? Um, right. <laughs> and so the idea of being able to like see things like that in like the actual space is pretty awesome. It's pretty cool. The things that we have available. And sometimes I just forget that they're there and that I can use yeah. them <laughs> to my advantage. But like, I didn't even know that a, I could do that because they're like, I'm constantly hearing more and more things that they can do, you know, but yeah, so that's an awesome idea. Yeah. It's so like Amazon. Like if you're looking at like a piece of furniture and Amazon, like, so actually the desk that like my computer sits on is like a, you know, standing desk converter thing, yeah. but I could like, I could see it in the space before, like, there's like a little button that says like, see it in your room or something. Like I've that. seen that just, button. Yeah. Yeah. And you just click That's on so it cool. and, and like, it's not always like super accurate. Like it asks you to like point to the ground, I think for scale. And then right. like, but sometimes the scale is like not great, but, but yeah. I think it's getting better every time. But anyway, sorry. I just wanted to know That's if you cool. had like tried any of that. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so do you have any favorite projects you've done uh, and what were they? Um, so I was going over these questions last night and I like got to that, like I'm answering, I'm like writing everything down. And I got to that one. I was like, I don't even know. And I sat there for a few minutes and then I like turned to my husband. I'm like, what are my favorite projects like help me out on this and he's like well that's not an easy answer because there's like and he just immediately was like there's like three different tiers of like favorite types of projects so True. the first one would just be like pretty so like the stairs I talked about yeah. yeah they were a little bit challenging but I still did it in a few weeks and I had to buy new treads but it still was only a few hundred dollars it wasn't terribly expensive or terribly difficult and I really like how it looks and I'm really happy yeah. with it so ones like that that are just pretty and then there are the ones that I mentioned I'm like really loving making things more functional so yeah. um our house is kind of funny they had in our kitchen two huge bifold door pantries like next to each other so we had two massive pantries which yeah. I mean one of them for food was more than we needed <laughs> and so the other one just became a catch-all for all the things I didn't want to put away um <laughs> and so <laughs> I like a year and a half ago, I took everything out of that and built a bench with cubbies and did some shelves with baskets for like winter gear. And we call it the mud closet, which I know is super cheesy because it's like a mud room in a closet. But I yeah. took the doors off and did that. And so that is a really like one of my favorites because it still makes such a big difference in the functionality of our home in giving everything a place. I'm yeah. finding that the more I give everything a place, like the more like Zen I can feel in my home, <laughs> like rather than so just true. having so many things that just need to be put somewhere, you know? Yeah. And so that one is one of my favorites. And then the final category is the ones that you just put everything you have into it. And mm -hmm. so it's your favorite because you know, you sacrifice so much for it. Right. Yeah. I think that my current project will probably yeah. make that list. Um, but I believe that. I, 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 I've been watching it. I believe it. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been a painful one, but um, yeah. I know from past experience that that means I'm going to love it even more because those projects yeah. that I'm like, I hate this. Why did I, <laughs> why did I think I could do this? Those are right. the ones that end up being like the ones that like my banister, for example, I had like a yellow oak banister when we moved in and like the stain was rubbed off. We lived here for like three years. I was like, okay, I'm going to sand it down and restain it. I don't think it'll be that bad. 
Um, and it took me six weeks of like four to five hours every day. And my house had like a half inch of dust on every surface. Oh. You know, it was terrible. I cried probably five different times during that project. And I still will like walk by it and rub my hand on. I'm like, oh, I love you. You know, like, so <laughs> because pretty. I had to work so hard for it, you know. And so yeah. those are the ones. So if ever you're in a project and not just DIY, anything where you're like, why did I think I could do this? This was a terrible yeah. idea. I don't think I can do it just remind yourself that because you're having to work that hard, you're going to be so much more proud of yourself later. Like those are the ones that really show you how capable you are when you feel like you're not capable and then you figure it out anyway. So yeah, that's awesome. I love that so much. Um, the last ish question, have you done any tech related projects like maybe a centralized charging station or anything? Similar. Yes. So you say centralized charging station. And in my idea of a centralized charging station is probably not the same as yours, but in my garage, <laughs> I like built a shelf and added a secondary outlet and added a bunch of hooks so we could hang all of the cords because we have a lot of different like batteries like this. Right. And right. We have lawnmower batteries and we have trimmer batteries and we have all these different batteries. And we were like, charging them on the floor with one one outlet that was up the wall, yeah. you know? And so I built a shelf above the outlet, added a second one. So we now have four and now everything charges there. I always know where my batteries are. It's really easy to keep them charged. We're not like fighting for outlet space. Right. So I did that one. But I did also, I have also put like the USB charging outlets in a few places in my house. And Oh yeah. I didn't like... I put one in my room just because I thought it was cool and I wanted to do a tutorial on how to do it and didn't think we'd use it that much. And then I was like, well, I'll put one in my kitchen too, just for fun. And we yeah. use them con like those are the two places in our house that we charge things because having the USB that you can just plug it into and eliminating the box. Is right, really right. So, it is so fun. nice. Um, I have several of those as well. Where And like, it's really usually pretty easy. You just replace the um, electrical plate, right? Like, um, Some of them might be like that. The ones I've done, you have to actually replace the outlet, but they might be getting to the oh, point sure. where you can just replace the plate and they have like the connection for it. They actually, now that you say that, I think they do have ones like that. But when I put these in, that wasn't really an option yeah. yet. <laughs> so I guess I, I have to the... get more tech. <laughs> I have those like lighty electrical yes, um, those are awesome. plates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like those have some like USB in, I mean, depending on which ones you get, but like, yeah. I think I only had to like really replace the plate. The plate. Maybe. That's awesome. So, and it probably, I don't remember. no, I think you're right. I think that I have seen that they're starting to do those ones too. Um, yeah. I've also put like some dimmers, like in the, my kids always watch oh, movies yeah. in their playroom. So I added dimmer switches and, you know, like you can add smart switches and do like smart bulbs throughout your home and like sync them all to your phone. I'm wanting yeah. to do that, but I'm kind of overwhelmed at the thought of like, like, what do I like, what room do I start with and how many of these do I want to do? But I think that that's a yeah. pretty cool option that you can control the lights and the different features from your phone, even if you're not home. Yeah. I think that's pretty awesome. So yeah, I, I have a lot of those. <laughs> that's awesome. That's the kind of DIY I know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the ones where I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm nervous. Yeah. But <laughs> Perfect. You're like, just come to my house. Like, and I'll go to your house. It'll all work out. We'll get all the things done. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So is there anything else you wanted to talk about that we didn't go over? Um, I mean, my biggest thing would just be to like it's okay to be scared. Like it's okay to be scared of something. Um, but I'm finding that education is what really helps eliminate that fear. So finding good sources to go to, to learn how to do something before you start, um, can really help take the fear out of it so that you can like really learn what you're capable of because anyone can do the things that I do. It's just a matter of if you want to, and then learning to not be afraid. <laughs> so yeah, I will echo, like, that is exactly what I say about technology, too. So I love that you said that because it's the same thing, you know. So many parents are so scared about, like, their kids and technology, but a little education goes a long way, and you don't have to be scared. You just need Absolutely. to learn. 
Totally. So I I love that parting parting message. So thank you so much. So where can people find you? What's the uh, what's your handle and everything? I don't know that we mentioned it at the beginning. Um, it's building it like a girl. So. And currently I am only on Instagram because I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's all good. You're doing great on Instagram. Uh, like your content's <laughs> awesome. So I, I was excited to find you. So check out building it like a girl. Definitely give her a follow. Um, and we will probably wrap this one up. So thank you so much for coming Thanks, and Sarah. sharing your awesome knowledge. And I'm going to like go check out all those tools now and maybe create a new <laughs> Amazon list. For there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Whitney. Thanks. We'll have a good night Thanks, or day, whatever it is. You too. <laughs>